Hey everybody, this is Townsend. I'm a singer, songwriter, musician, and mental health advocate, and I started the You're Not Alone project and podcast to help educate, spread awareness, and simply help you feel a little less alone, no matter what you're going through. Thank you so much for tuning in to Season 2 of You're Not Alone with Townsend. Be sure to click the follow button and share these stories. You can also watch the interviews on our YouTube under Townsend T Music. You can also keep up with the journey if you follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Townsend T Music. Every like, follow, and share helps us continue to change lives. What is up, everybody? This is your host, Townsend. I'm super excited about this episode of You're Not Alone with Townsend. Of course, I feel like I say that every single week, but every topic is so cool to me. Like these people are willing to share their stories. And I love, I've said this before, I love when professionals come on and they give that aspect of a topic. And so today we've actually got a counselor on here, therapist, whatever you want to call them. Casey Brasfield is joining me and we're going to be diving into ADHD, what that looks like, what it is. And I have had a ton of followers actually asked to have this conversation. So I am stoked to answer those questions for you guys and learn more about it myself. I feel like it's super prevalent in today's society. I feel like we see that term thrown around like crazy, but do we really know what it is? So we're going to dive in. Casey, we're going to just, we're just going to go for it. So who the heck is Casey? Let's introduce yourself. Tell us like, what is your title? Where do you live? What do you specialize in? Let's start there. Well, yeah, so I'm Casey Brassfield. Um, I have a master's degree and an LMHCA, which basically is a fancy way to say licensed clinical mental health associate. Um, I currently work in private practice uh, in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, um, but I did graduate with my bachelor's from UCA, so there's that. Um, right Arkansas now, Bears. With, yeah, I miss it. So right now I work with uh, kids families. I do some couples work and family therapy like as a whole. Um, but one of my big specialties is neurodivergence. And with that, ADHD and autism fall in there, but a lot of ADHD. Um, so that's currently what I'm doing is a lot of ADHD work, but um, a lot of trauma therapy and, and gender work too in North Carolina. I love that. I do have to throw out, I've known Casey for a while now. Now, I don't mean to age us, but like <laughs> we've known each other <laughs> I met you when you were just a babe, like this quiet, so quiet. Now you're out changing lives and stuff. No big deal. <laughs> okay, let's dive in. So first, let's define ADHD. What What is that exactly? I want to personally thank you for taking the time to listen to these conversations. It truly means so much. We've changed so many lives for the better, and we want to continue doing so throughout 2023. This project is made possible by sponsors and patrons. So if you'd like to help keep the You're Not Alone project going and hearing these amazing stories, we would love for you to join the family at patreon.com slash Townsend T Music. Just for signing up, you'll get free merch, discounts, and behind-the-scenes patron-only footage not only of my music, but of each episode. That's right. So each guest on every episode answers a few more questions that only patrons will be able to watch and listen to. So head on over to patreon.com slash Townsend Team Music, and let's continue changing lives. So I can give you the technical definition. It stands for Attention Death Hyperactivity Disorder. Um, and so... I mean, I'm going to go and get the caveat that I, I hate the name. I think it has the worst name in, in our entire giant book of disorders. Um, it really does a disservice. And so if, if we get technical, ADHD has three types. It's hyperactive, uh, inattentive, and then combined, which is a combination. But at its core, ADHD is a complex neurodevelopmental disorder, um, which means it's, it's pretty different than like depression, and anxiety, and things that we treat in mental health because it's a very brain-based disorder that you have from day one when you're born. Um, you may not notice the symptoms until later in life when things become too hard for you to manage, uh, but you can acquire ADHD. It's a genetic thing and it's there from day one, uh, but it's a disorder of executive function. Yeah. Okay. I've already learned something. One, I didn't know it had different, like there were three different kinds. One, I didn't know the name was a disservice, had no idea. I just thought that's, that is what it is, but you make a great point. And two, I didn't know you couldn't, 
I didn't realize you were born with it since day one. That makes sense. But, you know, if you don't have it, you don't think about those things. So what I got you? On why it's a bad name if you want. Tolerate me. <laughs> I'm, I might hit that up in just a minute. What okay. got you What got you into ADHD specifically? Like, why does neurodivergence draw you in? I guess is the best way to put that. That's a good question. So, um, I kind of always knew my brain was a little different than other people's, but didn't really have a title for it or anything. And uh, it is, ADHD is a very genetic disorder. When I see it, I see it all in the family. Um, and usually a parent or a parent has it, you don't know it yet. Um, and so it runs down my family. It's just no one ever caught it yet. So I think I, I actually didn't figure it out until I was an adult. And I showed up in my master's program at the college counseling center. And I remember going, I'm still making A's, but some things are ridiculously hard for me, like remembering there's another side to my paper. Um, and other people were like ice skating while I'm swimming in molasses. So can you help me figure out why some of these things are so frustrating for me? Um, so four hours later, really frustrating thing. And they're like, we have no idea how no one ever caught this for you. We're sorry, but you definitely have ADHD. Uh, so I kind of feel like some of the things I do in therapy, like trauma work and, and working with the queer community were chosen. This was kind of ready or not it kind of hit me over the head. So through a process of figuring out my brain, how to best help me figure out strategies to compensate. I just started working with more and more people and realizing that we really do a disservice to mental health with how much we don't treat this. That is incredibly interesting. I love that you said you don't even think about it. There's a back to that piece of paper. Like I, that would never cross my mind as a struggle. So that's wild to hear like something that specific. Like my friends that try to explain it talk about the daily mundane, like boring tasks are just impossible. Yeah, you know, like uh, people with ADHD are way more likely to do brand new things that are hard to them, but interesting than repetitive, really boring, really fast, easy things. Yeah, which is crazy to me because I think what people misunderstand is it comes off as lazy. Mm -hmm. One of the most common things, but it's really, it's really not. And there's a, there's a lot of shame in ADHD. So I actually work with a lot of people who I diagnose late in life. I diagnose a lot of medical doctors, surprisingly. Um, and so there's a lot of shame there from, you know, how long has this been going on? And, and I thought this was just me when it's actually something I can help. Whoa. Wow. Well, how does ADHD look different in children versus adults? Yeah. So um, one of the main pieces that we, we say ADHD and, and then the title is the word attention, but if I could do anything, I would get rid of that. I don't think ADHD really has much to do with attention at all. Okay. Um, it actually has everything to do with regulation. And so if you ask someone with ADHD, they'll tell you, I can pay attention. Sometimes I pay attention really, really well to things, just maybe not to what you want me to be paying attention to. And so I think it's more of a regulation thing. And when we move to that, lens, things start making sense because people with ADHD, ADHD have trouble regulating their attention. They have trouble regulating their money. They're always in debt. They have trouble regulating their emotions. They come off too big sometimes. Regulating how loud they are, how fast they're talking. And so when we put it through that lens, it's a, it's a little more kind. Um, and it makes it feel like there's less something wrong with me and more something I'm having a hard time with. And so it's really not that ADHD is completely different for kids, teens, and adults. It's just that the, the things that people expect you to do as an adult are a lot different than the things they expect you to do as a kid. And they don't have the same grace for you when it takes you longer or when you have difficulty with social skills. So when I work with kids, I think the biggest thing that they tend to deal with um, are things like emotion dysregulation. Um, they come off like too strong. They, they're extra sensitive sometimes. They, they're not aware of their body and how much their hands are in front of other kids' faces. Um, they have a hard time with social skills and they have a hard time making friends and getting invited to birthday parties. Um, I think that 30 to 50% of people will not graduate, will get retained at least once in high school if they have ADHD and 25 to 35% uh, will never complete high school. And 40% of people with ADHD have at least one learning disorder. And so I think we really miss a lot of those in school. It's, it, a lot of it's dyslexia. So when I really look at that, it's just kind of like you have a lot of help as a kid or a lot of kids do with their parents. But when they hit 18, their personal assistant disappears. And all these things are really, really hard for them to do. And so it's the same disorder. It just shows up a little different. I just learned so much right now. Like, this is <laughs> awesome. This is awesome. This is why I do this podcast. Like, I want to learn to make me a better person, to be more accepting, to understand people better. But it's also for people to feel a little bit less alone. 
And the amount of people that message me about this topic, like I am so excited because the people that want to hear about it that are like, I wish I could word this better. Like literally you need to write a book because I was so well worded, like just perfect. Like I feel like that really just put it into layman terms. Like, okay, well, this is what this is. You know what I mean? Which I feel like people with ADHD or that struggle with any of the things that we're going to mention or have mentioned it's hard to explain. You're just like, I don't know. It just is what it is. Mm -hmm. Another thing that happens with kids is that uh, there's a disorder called ODD and that stands for oppositional defiant disorder. Um, to put it in like bullet points, it's kind of like some, there are a lot of people that like being told what to do. People with ODD biologically fundamentally have a hard time with authority figures. Um, and when people tell them what to do, it's almost like someone in their brain goes, who do you think you are? And, and it's, a, they, they can't help it. Um, and so it really is harder for them. And what we do know is that 35 to 40 percent of kids with ADHD will get diagnosed with ODD. And so sometimes the poster kids for ADHD, um, they come off a little more severe than what we actually see sometimes in the community because there's such a big uh, comorbidity or like two disorders at the same time that you can't always piece it apart. Very, very rarely does ADHD come by itself. Interesting. OK, so let's go to the kids part. So what should parents do if they're starting to see these things with kids and they're like, OK, that that really triggers for me. That's really it hits home for me. What could they do? What do they need to understand about their kid or do for their kid to help them? So um, the differences for me for kids versus adults is I send kids for testing almost every time if I can. Um, and I don't do that for adults necessarily. So it, it, it's helpful for everyone, but if someone only has so many resources and they're an adult, I'm going to push them to go ahead and get started on med therapist. If I work with the kid, I'm going to push them for testing. So as a parent, if you're at a public school, I recommend that you reach out to your um, school counselor or like the director of exceptional children or, or something like that. Tell them that you suspect ADHD and you'd like the school district to do testing. Uh, that's your best way to do it because then you don't have to pay for it. Um, if that doesn't work out and it doesn't always work out the way you want it, or sometimes it may drag your feet a little longer than it should, then you can find a psychologist, um, and either do psychological testing or psychoeducational testing like we do at the practice I'm at. Um, and it's a series of IQ tests and different tests that we'll do that help us really tell the difference. And really, it's really cool. You can see your brain put out on paper and, and see, wow, I have a weakness in this, but a strength in this. And then we can learn strategies for your individual brain. Um, so I think testing is really helpful. Um, there's some websites I'll give you at the end that are really, really helpful for parents. Um, but because ADHD is a regulated disorder, I like to teach parents a lot of like hints and, and some of my parents like to call them Caseyisms. Um, one of them is I tell people, I don't care if, if for some odd reason you don't like Beyonce, that, that that's your opinion, but you've heard the single lady song. And so yeah. what I train my parents on is every time you hear that song, I want you to think if you like it, then you better validate it. Because with kids with ADHD, we need lots of validation, we need it instant, and we need it more than other people. So if your kid's doing something you like, right then in that moment, I want you to stop and go, I love how you just took your plate and put it in the sink so that you wouldn't have to do it later. Because yeah. if you don't validate that kid, why would you ever expect them to do that again? And so if you like it, then you better validate it. It's one of my, my big things. Um, I think the other piece is that it's a genetic disorder. A lot of parents to parent kids with ADHD a lot of times it's because they don't realize they also have ADHD. Uh, so research shows us that one of the most helpful things is to actually get the parent treated um, because then they're going to be better and feel more comfortable implementing some of these strategies and being able to kind of hold them over time. Wow. Okay. Super interesting. I love that. So let's go as an adult. What are some tips and tricks to kind of manage ADHD? Uh, number one, medication. So um, I, different people have different values and feel different ways. But what I'll say is I don't think that there is a disorder in our, our big book of mental disorders that's going to respond as fast and as efficiently um, as ADHD does to stimulants. So if you give someone without ADHD a stimulant, they're like, wow, this is fantastic. They can't sit still. Um, but amazingly, you give an adult or a kid with ADHD a stimulant and it actually calms their brain. They can think one thing at a time. They're really chill. Some people can take a nap after having a cup of coffee for a reason. So medications make a huge, huge difference. And because it's it's not like our other disorders, which you could just kind of pick up, it really is a brain-based disorder. It responds better to medication than other disorders do. So I'm a big fan of medication. 
Um, I'd say that's my number one. And I know for me, it felt like black and white to color. And usually when I work with adult ADHD, I usually diagnose them. I send them to their doctor. And then the very first appointment I see them after they've started their meds, they look at me in the face and they usually say, are you freaking kidding me? They're like, oh, fantastic. I, I feel like I could conquer the world. If people feel like this every day, why aren't they getting more? And so it really can be life changing. Wow. That was a question that one of my listeners had. They actually were going to ask, would you recommend medication or do you feel like there are holistic ways to manage for adults? And they asked that. They ended up going into explanation and they said they didn't like the idea of taking medication forever for their entire life. What advice would you have for that? Would you say, like you just said, I mean, it really does help. But what about those people that are like, I just don't want to be on medicine? And that's completely valid. So I, I do have one for this. And I have to say that I didn't create this quote, but I like to continue it. Um, so I say a lot, pills don't teach skills. And so what that means is that uh, some of the things that I struggle with, if I take my meds or someone with ADHD takes their meds, they're, they're not as hard for me. It's not as hard for me to initiate tasks that are going to be boring. Um, but at the same time, if I don't learn skills like how to use my planner and how to block my time efficiently and wear a watch all the time, then those pills can't fix that. And so sometimes I'll have parents come in and say, we really don't want our kid on meds. And I'll say, I'll work with you for a little bit and I'll check in with you. And I'll say, you know, we haven't made progress. Sometimes people come in so severe that we need meds to bring down the severity level so that they can tolerate learning some of these skills. Learning skills is hard. After they learn the skills, then they may not want to be on the medication. Most of the time people like to stay on it, but some people choose not to. Or some people may have other conditions or heart issues or different things that make it harder for them to stay on stimulants. So there are other forms of medications, but nothing's going to treat it as well as a stimulant will if you can tolerate it. Interesting. Okay, very good. So, okay, this is another one that a lot of people sent me. They wanted to know, if you've got ADHD, how do you finish those boring, mundane tasks? Yeah, yeah, it's hard. <laughs> so I think uh, medication helps a lot. It really, really does. Um, the other thing is, is I tell adults and kids to gamify things. Um, and that means with ADHD, it's really hard to do things that are fun. And that's because they're usually not novel. And so I'm never going to enjoy unloading and loading my dishwasher. I'm just not. But if I can set a timer and go, I bet I could do this in four minutes, all of a sudden I'm doing it and it's not that bad. Because usually the hardest thing with ADHD is starting it and then finishing it, not the in-between. Um, and so sometimes if the dishwasher is too big of a task, then I just keep beating myself up. Why don't I get to the dishwasher? It's so simple. This would be so easy. That means the goal is too big and I need to make the goal smaller. There's been times where my goal is I'm going to stand in front of my dishwasher for two minutes without doing anything else. And two minutes is long enough for me to get bored and start putting dishes in the dishwasher. Interesting. So I think it's kind of a mind frame. But the other piece is I actually don't send a whole bunch of adults with ADHD to counseling as much as I send them to coaching. And we have professionals that are specifically trained as ADHD coaches. And all they do is work with people with ADHD on creating strategies to make their life easier. Wow. You know, I've recently heard on social media, it's going to be a huge fad. I'd like your opinion on this. So it's basically you hire someone as like a cheerleader basically. And so you hire them and they FaceTime you when you're doing those boring mundane tasks. And like, they try to say that there's research that shows literally just having someone there helps you do those tasks a little bit better. And they can be totally silent and just sitting there mm -hmm. on FaceTime, or they can cheer you on or whatever helps you best. But these people are like blowing up, like people are making an income doing this job. What do you think about that? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's very similar to coaching. So um, that's called body doubling is what we usually call it. Um, some people call it parallel work when they're adults if they like. So I may, I may be able to do my room, my notes in a room if someone else is doing something in the same room. So with ADHD, I want to do anything but these notes that I'm going to walk around, I'm going to get coffee. But if someone goes, hey, where are you going? That might be just enough to keep me accountable. Um, people with ADHD will notice that if they're cleaning their room, they probably do better when they walk around talking on the phone. It's because that's occupying you while you do this boring thing. Um, so coaches are actually pretty cool because coaches are trained on ADHD brains and all the different parts of them and how to specifically help. So I worked with a coach when I was in grad school. Um, and it, 
it kind of depended on what I need. So maybe one day I would say, I need you to call me on Friday at this time and go, Hey, are you working on the paper you said you weren't going to want to work on right now? And so they kind of, you're paying someone to kind of be like a boost for your brain. And if that's really what you're having a hard time with, then that's going to help you more with ADHD uh, than a therapist will sometimes. If you're dealing more with emotion issues, um, people with ADHD have a higher rate of divorce, um, addiction issues, things like that. If it's one of those things, a therapist is helpful. If it's strategies for your brain, I think a coach is usually more helpful. I could totally take that job. So if people are listening and they're like, listen, I just need a coach. I could, I could do that. I could be a great coach. Like I'm a really good supporter. I'm a great cheerleader and I'm insanely organized. Like I was, I was one minute late for this podcast and it was stressing me out. Um, cause my gig ran late. Like I've just been running, running, but like, I can't be late. I'm incredibly organized. So if you guys need a coach, I'm a starving artist. I could use a couple extra bucks. You want to buy me dinner? I will help with your plan. <laughs> So, so not to kill your new business plan, but there is a cool website I want people to know about. No, no, Casey, no. Um, so it's just focusmed.com and it's free. And what it is, is you go on and you sign up for a time slot. So maybe I'd sign up for, for five to six. It's free. And then it'll match me with someone else in the world. Uh, you get on Zoom. And then for the first five minutes, you introduce yourself. And then you say, I want to open all my mail, unload my dishwasher and delete emails before this time's up. You keep your camera on and then for 40 minutes you work and then the last five minutes of bell will go off. You'll check in and all you give is positive feedback. So, hey, what'd you get done? Great job. If you like each other again, you can meet again. And if you don't, then you'll never see him again. But it's a completely free service and a lot of my college students really benefit from it. How the heck is that free? Okay, so you broke out a little bit. One, way to ruin my business plan okay <laughs> I had this all worked out just now but whatever that's fine no what was the website again you broke you broke up a little bit during that so it's a focus mate and so just the word focus and then mate and it's probably dot com but I don't remember it's a yeah. website there you go there you go I love it that is really cool focus mate that's really neat um some people love when I post these resources that we chat about afterwards. So I'll probably get you to send them to me if that's cool. And I, I love to send it, especially to my patrons as like just a little extra something. Here's a list that you guys can use, share it on my socials. Speaking of that, what are some other resources that people could use if they're looking to find more about ADHD or neurodivergent or whatever? So uh, there's three websites I really, really like, and I can send those to you. Uh, the first one is Attitude, and it's like the word attitude, but with two Ds, so add -itude. Um, That's probably my favorite, and you could, you could, I call it the rabbit hole. You could fall down a rabbit hole for a while on that website. There's just about anything you want to know about ADHD. They do a lot of free webinars. Um, there's some free quizzes, like all different kinds of stuff, and that's for kids and adults. Um, and they put out a magazine four times a year. Um, that I always make sure I'm subscribed to. It's really good. Um, then there's Chad. It's all caps, C-H-A-D-D. -D. Um, and then there's ADDA, A-D-D-A, which is a something adults with def something deficient, something, something. Um, so I'd say those three websites are my first three. Um, when it comes to books, I recommend books a lot to people, which is ironic because people with ADHD don't finish books. Um, but I'm a big fan of Barclay. So anything by Russell Barclay, um, if you are an adult, I really like this book. I wish I could get royalties on it. It's called When an Adult You Love Has ADHD. And I think this saves a lot of marriages for people I work with. Um, so this was written by a psychologist with ADHD and it's advice to give to your partner on how to best partner with you if you have ADHD. Very interesting. Wow. Um, I love that. And then for kids, there is a, uh, I think he, he's a neuro something. I know he's a medical doctor. His name's Dan Siegel. Um, and he does a lot of really great things like the whole brain child and stuff like that. So any books by Dan Siegel for kids and any books by Russell Barkley really for kids or adults are usually my go-to. I love it. I love it. Okay. One more. What do you wish people knew about ADHD? So like the common person out there that's like, oh, they're just lazy. If they were to take away anything, what do you wish they knew? I um, wish they knew that person with ADHD is always going to be beating themselves up on the inside more than any of the feedback they're getting on the outside. 
Um, and that a lot of times when it comes to people with ADHD, they freeze. It's kind of like a trauma response almost. You can fight, you can fight, or you can freeze. And that they freeze. And the more that they start thinking about what they're behind on, the worse it gets. And the least likely they are now because that mountain's getting bigger. And so sometimes instead of just like blank check-ins or um, shaming comments or you should have known better, I think just going, what's one thing I can help you with right now? What's the first step to this? Um, would be really helpful because people with ADHD, sometimes they just need someone to hold their hand and start the first thing and then they're fine. Um, But they just get really stuck and and kind of paralyzed sometimes. That's a good one to know. That is awesome. Casey, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. This was so helpful. Like, I literally feel like I just read a book about ADHD. I felt like I learned so much, just little tips and tricks, little nuggets of information, if you will. Well, thanks for having me. It's, It's a privilege. Absolutely. You're so well-spoken. I love what you were doing. Thank you so much for joining us, taking the time to join us, one, and two, just doing what you do. I I say this all the time, but I want to thank every counselor for what y'all do. Like, it is so much work, and I feel like it is such a calling and a specialty, so thank you so much for doing that. Well, thank you. Absolutely. All right, we will catch you later. Guys, we will chat with you next week. If you'd like to hear the rest of this interview, visit patreon.com slash Townsend Team Music. And don't forget, you can also watch the interviews on our YouTube channel at Townsend Team Music YouTube. If you're interested in a more holistic approach to mental health, I have the perfect place for you. My friend Rachel Clark is a counselor and neurotherapist located in the Little Rock, Arkansas area. She focuses on holistic body work, so that means treating mental health through brain and body interventions. Their services include psychotherapy, neurofeedback, and lymphatic drainage. So what is neurofeedback? Basically, it encourages the brain to learn more effective ways to self-regulate and ultimately produce more healthful brainwave patterns, which leads to more helpful thinking and behavior patterns. Lymphatic drainage, this is cool. They use the Balancer Pro, which gently compresses your body. It helps drain and flush out swelling, eliminate toxins, lactic acid, and muscle soreness, all of which contribute to cognitive and physiological decline. So if this interests you, be sure to go visit my friend Raisha Clark or visit her website at thecollectivecounseling.com. You won't regret it. Okay, guys, if you're in the market to buy or sell, I have the perfect company for you. Clark & Co. Realty is located in the Benton, Bryant, Arkansas area. They're able to serve you no matter where you're located in the state. They've streamlined the process of buying or selling a home to make it so much easier. They have a team of industry experts that make sure you have access from anything you can think of. I'm talking from local home inspectors to painters to gardeners and so much more just to provide you with the best service possible. They're dedicated to providing the most up-to-date market data in the area. And I think the coolest part is if you go on their website, you can use their easy-to-use fast property search. You can even create a custom market report to see what's active, under contract, and sold in your neighborhood. Their team is made up of caring, knowledgeable professionals that work around the clock to help you with the process of buying and selling your home. So again, if you're in the market to buy or sell, Clark & Co. Realty is definitely the company for you. Tell them Townsend sent you. Let's be honest. I think we could all use somebody to talk to every now and then. Healing Path Counseling in Conway, Arkansas is 100% my go-to when it comes to therapy. Wendy Blackwood has more credentials than letters in the alphabet. She's won awards for her outstanding services and has a whole page of board memberships. Basically, she knows what she's doing. She works hard to help equip you with the tools needed to live your best life. She even offers a variety of services including, but not limited to, cognitive behavioral therapy, technology-assisted counseling, relationship counseling, and EMDR. Trust me, I know therapy can be intimidating at first, but let me assure you, Wendy does her best to make you comfortable and find the best solutions and plans for you. Trust me, don't wait to make the call. Give Wendy Blackwood Healing Path Counseling a call today. Get started on the best version of you.